Uh, welcome back to another shader tutorial. And this episode we'll be doing a boss shader. Um, if you noticed, uh, this isn't exactly Dermot Fan. I uh, know this is um, this is a friend of his, and I'm just recording this video to help him out a bit. So, anyways, on to the tutorial. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is working on an emboss shader. And what an emboss shader does is, if you've ever seen one of those uh, business cards that have the logo stamped in, stamped in, that's a that's a good example. So. If you, but however, the the shader actually grayscales it. So if you if you can imagine an image that's stamped in like one of those business cards, and grayscale, that's basically what an emboss shader does. All right. So uh, we're starting out from with the same code from last episode. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is just create a new file, and we're gonna call it emboss dot fsh and emboss dot psh and we're actually going to copy the code from the vignette shader just so we can have a little base all right and the emboss shader uses the exact same vertex shader so there's no need to go over this uh, you should know what this does However, the uh, ver or the fragment shader is a little different. All right, so we're going to take out. Uh, we're going to take out this. We don't need this. We're also going to take out v underscore color, um, and that's it. So these are the only three variables that we actually need. Um, so first thing we're actually going to delete this. No, we're just going to delete everything. Start out completely fresh. So, first thing we're going to need to do is calculate how large one pixel is with the current resolution. And the reason we do this is to avoid weird scaling issues. Um, so, for example, when you, sh when, you, when you sample a texture in Jellison, you can, you can do it with one pixel, and that's just one pixel. However, if you do it with a large screen versus a small screen, it's going to be very, very different. Um, because on the large screen, it will be almost unnoticeable. However, on the small screen, it will be very large. So we want to make it equal on every single screen. And next, I'm just going to make a convenience, a convenience variable for the text cord. So. This is what that is, just a little convenience variable. And next we're gonna just create a another variable called color. You guys know what this does. And this is just gonna be the final color. And we don't need to initialize it anything right now. Um, and we're just gonna set it equal for I, I suppose you could just do this first thing, but for right, right you could just initialize it to this, but I'm not gonna do that. Because we don't really need to. So I'm just going to initialize it down there to a new VEC3 of 0.5. And this will, what this does, just putting one variable into the constructor, or into the parameter, it'll just create 0.5 throughout the um, every single one. So it would be basically the same thing as this. It's just a little easier. And next what we're going to do is actually do the sampling. So to do an emboss shader, you're basically just sampling around the area. So you're getting the color above it and the color below it. So in order to do that, we just need to, say, we just need to add on to uh, the color. Sampling the screen with the, uh, with the sampler. And say text core minus one pixel. See, this is where the pixel thing comes into play. We'll multiply by five. I'll explain it. So this is where the input or the one pixel thing comes into play, because what this does is make sure it scales correctly on all screens, like I've already explained. And I'll show you what this does after we've completed it. It'll make more sense. Oops. And I'm just going to copy this down. And 
subtract it. So now we're going to subtract it from it. And we're going to sample from higher. See, this sample is lower in the texture and the sample is higher in the texture. Or however, how, however your um, scene is just working out. Like an OpenGL, it samples differently. Right? Or just the way it renders. But anyways, so now we're going to do the grayscale component. And this is to make sure we don't get any weird color artifacts. I'll show you what it looks like without it. Just so you can get an idea of why we do this. So, you know, this is this is a standard grayscale. You've, uh, you should have already seen this. Far back 2.0. And actually, it's just a vector, so we don't need that. And now, and actually, we don't even need this here. And now we can just set the GL underscore frag color, final output color, to a vec for a color and one droplet. And that should be it for the shader. So now if we go into here, and as I said, I'll explain this after you've seen the effect. So I'm gonna go into here and just use boss.ush and bring that to ush. Now this will look a little, uh, seems like reframes are narrow. Too many arguments in the constructor on line six. Back to one point oh resolution. Oh, of course. Excuse me. Um, Snap and run. So as you can see, we've got. All right. So I actually, um, I actually ran the application, and it was on the other screen. So I am cutting that video segment out and showing you how it actually works. So, if we run it, and if this time, I actually drag it onto the screen, there we go. So, now you can, so you can see the, uh, the effect that we're getting. It's, it's pretty cool, in my opinion. So, you can see right here the effect that our sampling, the effect that our sampling gets. Uh, so you were sampling down by one, and you're sampling up by one. It's very prominent right on these uh, one pixels here. And the importance of our one pixel is being showed off right here. If I resize the window, as you can see, the sampling stays exactly the same. We don't get any weird little artifacts from our sampling, uh, from our resizing. And that's the importance of the one pixel. We, we get the exact same output with uh, any resolution, and that's really important. All right, so now I'll explain the importance of, uh, of this little number here. Basically, this is how much the effect will affect the, the final output. Um, because this isn't the best scene to show this on, I am going to put that other scene that I told you about together, and I will come back and I will show you the important you the importance of this and this variable here so I will be right back all right so I've put together a really quick and dirty um, little image rendering thing it just renders a quick image that I found online so actually I'll show you what the image looks like without the effect first so just what the image is it's just a simple little sunset scene right However, if we apply the uh, if we apply the shader, we get this. Now, I think that's pretty cool looking. I don't know about you guys, but in my opinion, that's pretty cool. So now, if we go into here, I can properly demonstrate this variable and uh, what this does. Here. So I'm just going to comment the grayscale out real fast show you the weird stuff that we get it basically just blends the scene together and we get this really weird um it's just really weird colors i i mean i don't exactly know why this happened this will i mean it just blends the screen together with the uh with the samples however because it's just adding it's adding one to it right 
times five, and because the way GLS will color this work, we get this grayscale effect, but we also get this color blend. And so that's why we do the grayscale. I don't know, you, you might like this. This might be some sort of interesting style that you want to add to your game. Um, it's entirely preference. However, if you want to get the true embossed effect, uh, it, that's what you're gonna want. So, all right, now, now this little bit of the joke. What this does is basically, as I said before, um, it dictates how much this shader affects the scene. So if I put this to something ridiculously high, say 500, you see we get this really, hmm, how should I put this, this really distorted, not, not exactly distorted, but I don't know, this is a really strange effect. And this is because now our sampling is very more is, is a whole lot more hard 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 I suppose is the, is the right word because we are the because we are multiplying the value we are getting a lot of a more precise color and a lot less of a uh, blend and so that's what's giving this uh, this little effect here. But if I set it something like one, so we just leave it at the default sample, we get this extraordinarily smooth texture, right? And now that might be fine and all. Um, that might be fine for some people. However, uh, it's good to, I think it's good to multiply by five because that just makes the emboss effect just that more um, noticeable. Well, I mean, it's, a little, it's already very, very noticeable. However, it makes it a lot, I say, cleaner looking. And I think five is pretty much just around the right, just around the right um, value. You can play around with this, do whatever you want. Um, I don't care. But anyways, uh, you should learn, yeah, you should have now learned what, how to make an emboss shader effect. If you have any questions, just ask your my fan. I'm sure he'll either he'll know or he'll if he doesn't know he'll ask me and uh, he'll find out in the end. So thanks for watching and see you next time.